Hi guys, it's Janet Wakelin with RemarkablyCreated.com. In today's One Take Wonder video, we are going to take another old idea and make it new again. As I've mentioned in previous videos or on my Facebook and blog, I've been in the middle of the big purge, simply cleaning out 19 years of accumulated crafting supplies and repurposing, altering, donating, selling, just doing all kinds of things, and it just feels so good. But I've really had fun taking some old ideas and making them new again, and I have a big box full of old ideas. A lot of times we're always looking for the latest and the greatest, and sometimes that can be found in the old ideas, simply um, following the, the way of fashion itself. So this cute little box, I love it because it uses a 12 by 12 piece of paper with absolutely no cutting. And here's the original one that you can see is Halloween. It was something that somebody presented to me. And then here is the one that I did to look like a little purse or a little clutch. And it is simply sealed with a magnet. And then it just opens up. And you'll be able to put your little treats and fun things in there for your showers, for your parties, great hostess gift, all kinds of fun little things. So let's go ahead and look at the supplies made. First, I used the... A little flower from the Artisan Embellishment Kit. It's a little higher and thicker, so sometimes it's a little more difficult to put on a card that you want to mail. So I found it perfect for this project right here. I have some of our Sahara Sand Lace. And then I have our Something Borrowed paper. And this paper is perfect for creating favors with. What makes this paper a little unique and different is first it's beautiful, soft, monochromatic um, color scheme, which is carried throughout. You'll only see... Um, the two, or actually three colors, it's got kind of a crumb cake base, Sahara sand base, and then white to it. And there's four sheets of three different designs, front and back. And so here you can see these three designs. And then when I flip it over, you've got the three different other designs. And so again, it's perfect for creating favors and, and things like that. So something borrowed. Great, great designer series paper in our spring catalog. So then what we're going to work with is then the other thing that you'll need is your trimmer. You'll need a bone folder. You'll need a ruler, a pencil so you can do a little bit of marking, and then an adhesive. And I have a 12 by 12 piece of Sahara sand paper and our trimmer. And if you miss some of the dimensions here, I will have them written out on my blog at RemarkablyCreated.com. And of course, you can always find links to all of my videos, either um, on my YouTube channel or in the post on my blog. I also encourage you to follow me on Facebook. I've been doing some fun little mini contests. You'll see a great contest around this project here on my blog, or not my blog, my Facebook page. So just go ahead and search for Remarkable Stampers, or look for the link in the description of this YouTube video. So with our 12 by 12 piece of paper, the very first thing that we want to do, my little cheat sheet, is, and I'm going to turn mine around, I like to have my cutting and scoring side on the right hand side, is we're going to just score each side at half an inch. And one of the things that you want to do is to make sure that your paper is up against this little ridge here. This little ridge helps keep your paper nice and straight. And let's just go ahead and score it. And then we're going to flip it around. Now technically, could you cut this half inch piece off? Yes, you could. But remember, we're trying to do a project with the entire sheet of 12 by 12. And so I've got a score mark at a half inch on either side of my 12 by 12. Then, without turning the paper or anything, we're going to leave this in, and we're going to come over here to 5 inches. And we're going to create another score. And notice I'm scoring a couple of times just because I want a nice deep crease. Stampin' Up's trimmer has an arm that you'll be able to extend out. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to slide it over here to 7 inches without taking it out and we're going to score it again. So right now the first scores that we've made is at the half inch mark. We've slid it over five inches. We've slid it over to seven inches and then we've slid it over to eleven and a half inches. So half inch, five inches, seven inches, eleven and a half inches. Now we're going to turn it one turn to the left and we'll slide it back into our trimmer and this time we're going to score it at, let me double check my marks, three inches. We'll slide it over again and we'll score it at 
nine inches. So we've got three inches and nine inches. And now you can put your trimmer away. You won't need it for the rest of this. And one of the things that I like to do is to go over my, my um, score marks, just kind of folding them. And we'll do that a couple of times through here. I'll do it once again with the bone folder, but I just kind of want to give you just a basic look at it when you start to score it. So you've got your score marks here. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a crease. So I've got this laying down again. So that you've got your half inch, your five inch, and your seven inch facing up and down. I want to score in that box here on the lower side from the five and the seven inch mark out to a two inch mark. So I have my ruler. Oops, and let's tuck this fold under. Tucking that half inch under. We're going to take our ruler and we're just going to mark at two inches. We can do the same thing over here. Let's tuck that half inch under. And we're going to mark at two inches. And we turn it around and we'll do the same thing. We'll mark at two inches. And this is going to be on the inside. People aren't going to see those little tick marks. And two inches. And now with our ruler and our bone folder, we'll come up here to the point and just really press hard. You want a nice deep score there. Press really hard. And we're going to do that on all four areas where we made that two inch tick mark. We're going to come up here to the point and create a nice crease. And let's do that again over here. Like that. And one more time. The other thing that's nice about this box is it doesn't include any cutting. There's no um, little snips and folds and things like that that you need to do. So now what I want to do is, again, I'm going to take, and I just want to really make sure I've got some good creases. It really does help boxes go together better when you have those nice creases. And then the same thing with these crease marks that you made here, you can just kind of bring them in and bring them out and just kind of make sure that you've got a good fold going on. And they are going to end up facing out, but again, I just like to work them just a little bit because it will go together so much easier for you. Now a little tip that I found that helps is if I take this narrow section right here on either side of those two diagonal creases that I made, and if I just take and pinch them right in the middle. Just bring them together, the two sides, and give them a little bit of a pinch. That helps. Now, before you totally assemble all of this, if you want to add designer series paper, a little bit of lace like I did here, you're going to want to do it at this point. You're going to want to cut designer series paper to fit any of the panels that you want, um, or stamp it, or whatever you're going to do. If you're going to stamp it, you can fold it back out of its way and you can go ahead and stamp inside of this panel. And again, if you want to la add lace or if you want to add a scallop piece of cardstock on here, you're going to want to do it all before you assemble it. And then what we're going to do is after you've got your designer series paper added, go ahead and seal that flap down. And again, remember I said you could cut that flap if you wanted, but for me that defeated the purpose of using a whole sheet of 12 by 12 paper. So, got that sealed down. So now we're going to bring it back around. And to put this together, make sure that those diagonals are pointing out. Pointing out. And you're just going to start to bring it in. Oops, pointing out, Janet. There we go. Pointing out. And it'll just come together. <laughs> there we go. Like that. So, you've got it. Make sure your diagonals are pointing out, pointing out, and then just push the center piece in and slowly bring it up, and then you can actually, 
Okay, Janet, get this together. <laughs> there we go. You got what I'm trying to say. It worked the first time when you guys were watching. There we go. <laughs> oh, okay, so we've got this, and then this piece pops back up and out. Hold on a minute. Let me show you the finished one. It works. Trust me. It really does. Okay, so see the marks here? Your, your diagonal pieces are pushed in. Part of it's pushed out and it just folds in together just like that. So again, you're going to come in, here's your diagonal pieces, kind of bring it up, that's where that little point was that we made, and then you just bring it up. Sorry about that. There you go. Of course it always works better when you're playing with it at home in the privacy of your own craft studio. It's always challenging when you go to show somebody else. So make sure you visit my Facebook page, Remarkable Stampers, for a fun design contest featuring this basic premise of a 12 by 12 sheet of paper to create a fun little, um, whether you call it a purse or whether you call it a little pocket that you can close with a clothespin, whatever you want to call it. Look forward to seeing your own creations with this. Thanks, guys. Take care.